verse 7 through 10. I want to talk on a topic this morning, the greatest deceiver. I have used this scripture many times throughout my ministry, but the Lord just brought it up again. So if you bring it up again, it's something that needs to be said that can help someone. Remember, the scriptures are here to help you. So I want to talk about from a topic this morning, the greatest deceiver. Satan is the greatest deceiver. He knows how to manipulate situations. And you have to be wise in the spirit of the Lord to know when he is at his craftiness. So I want to talk about the greatest deceiver. When you talk to someone the greatest, that means they are the best at it in the whole wide world. And he is the greatest deceiver. Amen. Now what does that word deceive mean? To cause someone to believe something that's not true. Mm -hmm. Satan very good at causing people to believe stuff that is not true. Amen. In order to gain something personal. When someone tries to deceive you, it's because they cause they want to cause you to believe something that's not true in order to gain something personal. So we want to talk about the greatest deceiver. Satan is the greatest deceiver. Yes. No human being can prepare oneself for his deception mm -hmm. outside a relationship with Christ. What that means is that if you're not in a personal relationship with Christ, if you don't know God, you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are no match for his craftiness. Because what people don't understand about the enemy, he is very patient. Mm -hmm. He will wait years and years and years to manipulate you. That's what he got to do. But if you have the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. or if you're in a relationship with God, you will be aware of his work and his craft and recognize his work when you see it. Mm -hmm. How many of you growing up, I know I was growing up, I just like to keep it real. And they tell you, well, we're having a get together and Uncle Bobo coming. And they say, oh Lord, here come the old devil. <laughs> now you know why they say that? Because the stuff he do, or the stuff they, how they carry himself, is not good. So that's just a saying. Yeah. Amen? So you don't heard that phrase, but this yes. is real. Yes. See, Satan used to be in heaven, mm -hmm. and he wanted to be above God. He did. He wanted to build his altar above <laughs> his God. And he got some of the angels to go fight against God with him. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, they lost the battle. And God threw him out of heaven onto the earth. And some of the angels fell to the earth with him. Mm -hmm. But God had already given the earth to man. Yeah. He said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. And let them have dominion over everything that creeping and crawling. So we're supposed to be in charge of the earth while God rules the heaven. Yeah. But God gave us this home to us. And we're supposed right. to take care of it. <laughs> but when Satan was cast out of heaven, he didn't have no home. So he came down to the earth. And he tries to manipulate us out of our inheritance. Yeah. So he can't take it from him, from you, but you can give it to him by allowing him a place in your life, family, yeah. or your relationship, yeah. even your finances. Yeah. So you don't give him no opportunity to manipulate or deceive you, but you won't know how he operate unless somebody teach you about it. Yeah. So when you get the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will give you discernment when you can know whether this work is of God or this is of the devil. And everybody in this room, including me, have been deceived by someone or something at some point in your life. Yeah, right, right, Amen. Right. I remember I bought a car and it was a lemon. I didn't know what a lemon was, but I found out real quick. <laughs> when the car quit working two weeks after I made a down payment, yeah. I was deceived. The man made me think that that was a good car. And it wasn't. So I was deceived. So deception is part of our society. Yeah. Some of us like to make the boss think we are good employed. Because we work when we see him coming. Yeah. And when he turns his back, we don't work. Yeah. We what we doing. Yeah. Yeah. So deception is part of our society, but you don't want to be deceived by the devil at no point. Because if he deceives you, then you're going to miss heaven eternally. Yes. There's some things you can make up or recover from, yeah. but you can't make up from going to hell. <laughs> Once you get to hell, you stay there. Yeah, yeah. 
Amen. You don't get out if you ever make it there. Amen. Ask the rich man that died. He said, let brother Lazarus put the tip of his finger in the water because I'm tormented in this place. And Abraham said, now you know there's a great gulf fixed between where you are and where Lazarus is. So those that are where you are cannot cross over and those that are where he is cannot cross over. A great gulf has been fixed. Yeah. So once you get there, you stay there. So the key is, don't never make it there. But you got an enemy walking about seeking whom he made the vow and he's going to try to manipulate you and make you think that this is not all worth it. Yeah. It is worth it. Remember, because deception is to get you to believe something is not true in order to gain something personal. Amen. Like the cable guy. Oh, we're going to give this little bit. <laughs> You're going to pay you $50 for all the challenges. Not and for 12 months. And then you forget. You know you're going to forget the 12 months. But you just watch the Showtime HBO. And they say, no, your bill was from 50 to 120. Uh -huh. And you probably say, my cable bill went up $80. What happened? And they say, you didn't renew. <laughs> They're not going to give you a reminder phone call now. The trick is for you to keep up with your bills. Yeah. Not them. They sold it to you. Now it's on you. Yeah. Revelation 12, verse 7. Look to your next day. He ain't going to finish today. Yeah. You're going to have to come back next Sunday. Oh, I'm not going to finish. Because I know that the Lord, I know how the Lord is dealing with it. Yeah, I want to get you a good understanding of who you playing with that devil. And he is not, listen, you're not supposed to play with him oh. and don't talk to him. Yeah, ain't right. Don't even listen to nothing he got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Because every time he comes, the Bible says he comes to do three things. Steal, kill, and destroy. And I don't know nobody wants their stuff stolen. And I don't know nobody's ready to die. Okay, I'm going to be talking about we ready, we ain't ready. The minute we get a little caught, we run that doctor. Or he wanted to destroy what you have. It don't matter what you have. Your children, your marriage, your job, your car. He want to kill, steal, or destroy what you have. And that's not a good combination. I don't care how you look at it. So I don't need to be talking to him at all. So let's learn a little bit about Mr. Satan and how he operates. The only defense you have against Satan is only one defense, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I know grandma can pray for you, but that prayer only go so far. Yes, right. He's still going to come talk to you. Right. And most of the time when he talks to us, we don't even know it's him. Yes. You know how I know I'm right? Because the Bible says he transformed himself yes, to appear as an angel of light. Yes, right. He's not going to mean, be mean and ugly and mistreat you. Matter of fact, he may even help you with some of your problems. Yes. But it's only for some person. Remember that. So he transformed himself, and so does his angels. The people that serve him, his servants, they transform themselves. How many of you ever seen a lizard in the summer? Oh, yeah. Be green when you're on a leaf. Uh -huh. And then get on some brown and turn brown. That's what the devil do. He go with the flow. Uh -huh. Amen. He know how to change up on you. Mm -hmm. Revelation 12, verse 7. Look what it says. And there was war in heaven. Mm -hmm. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Michael is God's war angel. Yes. He the one that fight the battles for God. Michael is an angel of God. Fought against the dragon, that's Satan, and the dragon and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither there was a place found any more in heaven. Satan used to be, see the devil used to be in heaven. He knew how beautiful it is up there. Look at your name and say, he don't want you to make it there. He don't want you to make it there. Verse 9 say, and the dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the what? Devil and Satan, which deceive him. Look, that's why I say he's the greatest deceiver. He goes out to deceive what? The whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The devil ain't in the ground. I know somebody told you the devil lived in the ground. Yeah. That's what they taught me when I was little. Yes. Yeah. And they say when it's raining and the sun up, if you put your ear to the ground, you can hear him beating up his wife. <laughs> Yeah. That's what they taught me. I, I used to believe that too. I put my head to the ground one time. It was rain and the sun was out. And I wanted to hear the devil when I was a child was beating up his wife. And ever since that June bug got in my ear, I couldn't do it. <laughs> so I never found out if that was true because the June bug got in there. 
But the Bible don't teach us that. See, that's a misconception. Amen. The devil lived in between heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. In the middle of heaven. And he go back, he go back and forth to and from the earth. But he don't have no place no more in heaven. And he want to make sure we don't get it down. Amen. And so your only defense is Jesus. Satan is the great deceiver. No human can prepare oneself for his deception outside a relationship with Christ. You are no match for him if you think you're going to outsmart him or stand a chance at getting back at him at his own game. The only tool you have to survive his manipulation, because he can't do nothing to you if you say it. He can't even kill you unless God give him permission. The only tool you have to survive his manipulation is Jesus Christ in the person of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So once you get saved, if you say this prayer, you say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you the Son of God. I ask you to come into my life, fill my heart. I want to be your Lord. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. The minute you confess that and you really meant that, you say it. And then we baptize you because Jesus said you need to be baptized. It's symbolic of the old person dying and the new person being raised up. And so the minute you say that, God seals you. I'm not going to get the scripture right now for, for time's sake. He seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise. In other words, God marks you as his child so he knows all those that are here. That's why when Jesus come back in the last days, he said he's going to put all the ghosts on the left and the sheep on what? Right. I'm going to separate you because I got to Separate my children yes. from the devil's children. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen. So the minute you accept Christ, you're born again. You get the gift Amen. of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then you obey the Christ, even though you, you're not as wise as you're going to be, but you're wise enough to discern. Amen? Amen. Amen. See, a baby rabbit snake a kid just like a full grown rabbit snake. Yeah. Yeah. His little teeth bites may be small, but he got the same venom yeah. in him that a full grown rabbit snake has. Right. So when you're born again, you can learn how to discern the tricks of the enemy. Yes. There's not a person in this room that has not been deceived by someone or something, Amen. even yourself. Amen. Some of lie to ourselves. Amen. 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 Some things you can recover from when you get deceived. Yes. Or you can fix or you can restore. But there are some things that you cannot recover from. If you let Satan deceive you, and to not receive his salvation before you die. You cannot and will not spend eternity regarding heaven. Hell will be our final resting place. Mm. If you die before making this connection, yeah. I've seen a bunch of preachers at the funeral say, he was a good man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Little Bobby, he didn't bother nobody. You, you ain't going to hell, I don't care what the reference say. If you didn't make that choice before you got that coffin, you're going straight to hell. Yes. Yes. And God don't send nobody to hell. It's a choice. And God don't send nobody to heaven. It's a choice. Whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. Saved. Amen. Amen. If he deceive you, it's not getting around and making this your choice before you die. Then you will spend eternity in hell. And that is not the will of God. Because God created hell for the fallen angels. God did not create hell for any human beings. He created hell for the fallen angels. Amen? <clears throat> so what are some deceptions we may have experienced in our lifetime? What are some deceptions? Some of us hooked up with the wrong people at some point in our lifetime. Because everything good ain't gold. Amen. People talk a good game when you first meet them, don't you? Uh -huh. yeah. They ought to be nice. And then some people are sincere. But it's up to you to pick up on And God gave you an intuition anyway. Sometimes we know something don't be right, but we call ourselves, we're going to make it right. Yeah. You don't call yourself, going to make it right. Uh -huh. And then it'll bite you. Yeah. Later on. Mm -hmm. What are some deceptions? Some of us are hooked up with some wrong people. Some of us chose some bad careers. Uh -huh. Thought the job was going to be my idle job. It was a job I didn't like. Mm -hmm. Some of us moved to some bad areas. They thought it was a good area, it was a bad area. Yeah. Some of us bought something that wasn't good, but we got a good deal for it. Uh -huh. It just recently happened to me and my wife. 
I brought a little TV for Christmas, and it worked for one week. Mm. Brand new out the box. Mm -hmm. Grab the remote, TV wouldn't say nothing. Mm -hmm. Put some new batteries, TV wouldn't say nothing. Talking about made in America. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Philips TV brought it right back to Walmart. I brought it right back to Walmart. Of course, they exchanged it with no problem. I said, give me a wall brand, wall, Walmart brand. Mm -hmm. I bought a name brand, it didn't honor up. Yeah. Bought me a Vizio, been working ever since. <laughs> <laughs> These ain't gonna make no problem. Just buy Walmart. Yeah. You know, they put it right in between uh, uh, Sony and, and Phillips, and they put theirs right in the middle. <laughs> Just give me whatever. I'm tired of coming back down here. Yeah. Gotta break the TV down, put it back. I got food. Oh, yeah. You know? Amen. And they ask you, see, they know sometimes you're gonna get a bad deal because they say, do you wanna purchase a two year insurance? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 We, we've been deceived. Some of us bought some cars that wasn't no good. Some of us invest, made some poor investments, mm -hmm. and it didn't give a turn out. Yeah. But the worst one is this, trying to call wrong right mm -hmm. and right wrong. Yeah. This is what we live at in 2018. Boy, that's a boy, Isaiah said, when you do that, Isaiah said he was a prophet of God. He said, whoa, yeah. uh -huh. when you call right wrong and wrong right, that's right. when you call good even evil good, yes. that's the time we live in. When you put beautiful sweet and light for dark, Isaiah said, Woe to the nation that does that. Mm. Amen. There are all sorts of deception in the world today. Some people believe there are no consequences for bad choices. Wow. Amen. Mm -hmm. Some people believe that there are no consequences for bad choices, but they are. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And Christians as believers, we need to stand for what's right. Even if we're a minority. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because that's how you read out evil. Yeah. You take a stance against it. You don't join it. You take a stance against it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. My job is to prepare you to connect with Jesus and admonish you about your defeated enemy. See, Satan is a defeated enemy. Mm -hmm. yes. He already defeated. He already lost the battle. But he don't want you to know he lost the battle. That's right. I'm going to just give you a few pointers about him. And I know I'm not trying to bore you. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to make you aware that yes. he is alive. You don't yes. believe he's alive? When you go home tonight, just look at the 10 o'clock news. Mm. That was a non Christian's activity that's going on. <laughs> look to your neighbor and say, the devil is busy. Yes, he is. He's working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Early part of this year, a little 12 year old girl jumped in her grandmother's car and took her little brother ride because his grandmother wouldn't let her go see her boyfriend. What? And the police chase lasted over 20 minutes, 100 miles an hour. Yeah. She was 12 years old, the police couldn't even catch her. <laughs> the only way they had caught her, they had to call her and start to cut the engine off. <laughs> 12 years old. Wow. Drive better than me. I'm when I saw that video, I couldn't, ain't nobody drive on gravel road like that. Twist. The only way they caught her, they caught the unstar off. <laughs> Come Google it. I'm joking. This had a little boy stole a car. Only reason they caught him because he wrecked downtown. This was in you. He about 12. Police chase over 100 miles an hour. He learned how to drive watching video game. <laughs> he crashed downtown and hit a pole. They couldn't catch him. The devil is busy. And let me tell y'all something too that I see. Now you got to be real spiritual to receive this. What the devil been doing lately is he been getting in the animals and attacking us. Mm -hmm. I know people say, the devil don't get no animals. The devil do get the animals. And so does God. When Jonah was fleeing God, the Bible said, God prepared a fish to swallow up Jonah. Who prepared the fish? God. And since the devil is trying to be like God, and it would take off. He get in animals too. Oh, yeah. yes. You think all these animals attacking people just that's the devil. Mm -hmm. He ain't getting animals. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about that later <laughs> on. Amen. On another list. But he does. Right. When Adam and when Adam and Eve were deceived in the garden, 
Who talked to them? Who talked to them? The serpent. You mean to tell me the snake can talk? Yeah, the yes. same guy in the snake. Mm -hmm. What does the devil do? I'm getting ready to close. Because I told you I'm not going to feel about it. I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures for our clothes. What the devil does, he walks around mm -hmm. looking for people he can get. He looked for people that are easy to talk. If you was a grizzly bear and you was hungry, would you chase a, a, a fast cheetah that can run 100 miles an hour? Or would you try to get that big old fat turtle that can't run at all? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get full off that turtle because that's an easy kick. Well, that's what the devil do. He looking at Christians all over the world. So I'm saying, man, when the fool going to be ready to gain, come on. Ain't going praise the Lord. Mm. Ain't thinking about no Jesus. Don't know still hurricane season. Mm. Ain't thinking about no Jesus. Think about the game. Mm -hmm. Worry about what what's the name Deshaun Watson gonna do. <laughs> I ain't judge. I'm just saying. Don't get mad at me when the hurricane see me and turn around and go the other way. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because Satan already know you don't have no strength because he watch you. He watch you go to church, but then he watch you throw the Bible under the bed till next Sunday. Yeah. Don't do that. Look at, and I'm, listen, I read the Bible, but I'm, I ain't going to lie to you. It was hard. Mm -hmm. It was boring in the beginning. Yeah. But then when I fell in love with God, it was easy. Because yeah. I love God now. Mm -hmm. And I just want him because what he could do for me. I wanted him for what he already done for me. Yeah. 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 It's a difference. First Peter 5.8, we're going to give this one scripture, then we're going on. First Peter 5.8, I've got to show you this one, because he, he loved to do this to people. Say, when I learned this scripture, it changed my life. I said, oh, okay, that's how he be doing. Wouldn't it be a, football teams do it all the time, basketball team. When they lose a game, they go in and study other opponents, they watch the video to know how they can deal with them in the next game. So that's what Satan do. He watch your video every day. Uh-huh. He learns you. Before he attacks you. But he can't attack you if you got the blood coming. Amen. 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 So if he can't attack you if you got the blood coming, yeah. he's gonna try to trick you into doing it. Oh, yeah. He can't he know he can't make you do it because you're strong in the Lord. So he's gonna try to trick you into doing something. And that's what deception is. Yes. To cause you to believe in something that is not true in order to gain something personal. First Peter 5 8, when you find say, bless his name. Bless bless his name. name. Look what he said. Be sober. Be vigilant. That word vigilant means be watchful because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. He is not a roaring lion, but he acting like he a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he made the vow. He walking around like he's a lion, like he's somebody bad, seeking whom he made the vow. That's how the lions get their prey. Before they get them, they say, Row! Boy, you talk to me like that. I'm <laughs> you know, I saw do something. There was a dude, he was a bully when I was in elementary school. He was a little bitty guy at the school, but everybody was scared of him. <laughs> <laughs> my brother came running home. I said, My dad thought a man was chasing him. He was a little bitty bully. You know why he was so powerful? Because he talked a lot of trash. People were afraid of him because of his mouth. So he intimidated with his mouth. And that's what Satan does. He wants to intimidate you to make you think you have no power, that God don't love you, that you're not going to be blessed. He walks around like a roaring lion, seeking him when he made the vow. As a roaring lion. And when the lion roars in the jungle, it let all the other animals know that I'm around. And so if you're scared, or all the ones are scared, guess what they're going to start doing? <laughs> but I guarantee that elephant don't go nowhere. That elephant might roll back. <laughs> but all the ones that's getting in line, what they gonna do? Deuces. <laughs> Give the Lord a hand clap. <laughs> Satan is the greatest deceiver. Yes, yes, yes. We'll conclude next Sunday if the Lord willing. Amen.